Welcome back to Models 101. Um, in this segment I'm going to be talking to you about life as a model and kind of what to expect as a model. So when you start out modelling, most uh, models can do a little bit of everything. Um, they can be a little bit editorial, they can be a little bit commercial. It's generally after a little while that um, either your booker generally will kind of work out where you're most suited. Um, straight away they might have an idea for you and straight away they might realise that that idea is a, a bit wrong. Um, so, you know, when you first start out as a model it, it's kind of a little bit tough. You won't necessarily make any money or much money for a while. You know, you've got to spend a lot of money travelling. Um, sometimes you go to, you know, five, ten castings a day. Um, you know, sometimes you might have to stay in a foreign city, so you have to pay for a model flat. Um, that's a, another interesting <laughs> point. It's a great place to meet friends, but every model I know has a model flat horror story. Um, I think I've been pretty lucky, but it is a great place to meet friends and kind of get a feel for, you know, what the modelling industry is kind of like, because you can swap stories, have a chat, you know. It's nice to know that other people are going through what you're going through. I know lots of models that have done, you know, two seasons of fashion where you can end up being in debt to like four countries. Um, it's, it is really difficult. Um, doing fashion week is a bit of an interesting one. Um, you can do like one city that you're based in or that's closest to you. You can go and stay, um, and do like a different city that's close to you. You can do all four cities. Um, there are, I mean, obviously the main four main fashion weeks, um, New York, Paris, London and Milan. And each season is very different for every girl. There's no way to predict what um, is going to happen in any season or any city. So some girls can kind of be told that they're going to do really, really well for the whole season, only to kind of flunk out in New York and then go to Europe and be a bit so-so or they can flunk out in New York and then all of a sudden they book every show in, you know, Milan, Paris and London. So it's, you know, it's something that a lot of young models have to do um, if they, they want to be a real top model. So, you know, Fashion Week is a really hard time. You know, some girls do like, you know, 40 shows during Fashion Week and you've just got to really, really work hard for that. Um, it can be, you know, 16 hour days the whole time during all the fashion weeks. You fly from city to city to city. Um, sometimes, you know, jobs get cancelled last minute. I've seen even big girls have um, shows cancelled last minute and it's kind of a bit disheartening but you've also got to remember that generally a designer will have say 16 girls in a show and 13 of those girls, they already know who they're going to have before casting start. For example, in Milan years ago, I was going to castings there were three, four hundred girls for three spots. And we're just like, okay, great. This is like amazing. Uh... If you want to do Fashion Week, then suggest it's your agency. But most of the time, they will decide who will do Fashion Week based on, you know, a girl's height, a girl's frame. Because the brands often like, you know, a s certain sample size. Um, if you're a little bit more commercial, a little bit more curvy, Fashion Week unfortunately won't be for you. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, Fashion Week can be amazing. It can be a platform for models to become top models. But then again, um, if you're more curvy or you're a more commercial model, then um, not doing Fashion Week isn't really a problem at all because then you can work during that whole month of Fashion Week where a lot of girls will be away. So yeah, being a, a more commercial model or not doing a Fashion Week isn't a massive deal. Um, and you know, then the commercial girls can often make money a lot sooner than the editorial girls can. They um, have a longer lifespan. Um, although a lot of the, these days, a lot of the um, editorial girls from five, ten years ago are now doing more commercial stuff because they've got a name for themselves. Um, but being a commercial model, generally, you can have a lifespan of a long time and I am testament to, to that. It's easy for a model to have a, a lifespan these days of, you know, a decade. Um, a lot of my friends stop modelling around 22 to 24. These days it's more getting around 26, 28 I think. Um, that's just from my personal experience with my friends. So I think a lot of people have this idea that models get paid amazingly. Um, but then when you say, you know, the cover of Vogue, even if Kate Moss shoots it, she gets paid £75, it's like, what? Uh, yeah. 
that's true. So a lot of the time, a lot of the higher magazine, higher end magazines like Vogue, Harper's, Marie Claire and stuff, they, they don't really pay you very well at all. Um, but the fact that they don't pay very well, it doesn't really matter because they're the magazines you want to be in because getting those editorials can make your book stronger so then you can get better jobs. Um, they have you know, a higher likelihood of the right people seeing you, like casting directors, um, other photographers, stylists, hair and makeup artists, you work with these amazing people that then work on much better, bigger shoots. Um, so it's it's that really, really important that you realise that not the life of a model is not like all money and high flying and glamour and <laughs> whatnot. Um, yeah, so even though magazines can pay very, very little, you know, campaigns can pay a lot. Um, sometimes in your faces they don't pay so much. Um, but generally, um, girls will be classed into brackets of um, how much, you know, they can earn. And it's kind of just, it, it can change like year to year. It can change month to month. Um, you know, you, you might be on a certain day rate for six months and then the next six months your day rate's dropped. And it's not because there's anything changed about you. It's just because the market changes. Like when I first started, you know, the waif kind of alien look was in. Um, and then it went to like, you know, really like, uh, Brazilian kind of goddesses. Um, and then it went to like really kind of edgy. And then now it's kind of gone back to really like kind of Kardashian type, Disney type features. Oh, I know that sounds so bad, but I really feel like it has like big, big features are really in. Whereas, you know, girls back, you know, 10 years ago couldn't be models really if they were like that. They were just constantly told that they were too commercial, whereas that look is coming a lot more in. Um, and clients are really loving healthy bodies these days. Milan's always been about like, you know, body shape um, over beauty, I feel, as a personal experience. Um, but places like Australia and stuff, they're, they're really into the fit, fit bodies as well. Um, but yeah, every market is really, really different. Um, you might work in some markets, your friends might work in other markets. You can't ever really say that you're going to work. If you work every day in one city, it's not necessarily you're going to work at all in another city. So every market has a, a completely different feel to it. So for catalogue, print, ecom, you don't necessarily have to have a great book. Um, you'll have like a bit of probably a bit of a testing book when you first start out. So it'll be a lot of different tests in there. Um, and then as you get more and more editorials, hopefully they'll like slot in in the middle a few campaigns maybe. Um, uh, but to be a catalog commercial ecom model, your book doesn't need to be amazing. It just kind of needs to show who you are because most of the time the client just wants someone to show off the clothes. So then when you go to the casting, you know, you need to try the clothes on, then you'll need to move around. So they need to be able to see that you can move. Um, so your book may have some bearing on it, but n not anywhere near as much as like if you're going to do um, a really high end uh, beauty shoot or really high end fashion shoot. Um, new face models, it doesn't really matter as much, I suppose, um, the quality of your book, just really how you look in those pictures. So again, going back to the testing, as in one of the other videos I've already done, um, testing is a really important way of like being able to show uh, your character and who you are. Um, okay, so how much will you work? As a model, you can work every day and you can work once a month. Sometimes the girls that work once a month earn the same amount as the girls that work every day. Um, it's really difficult to kind of um, judge. Some models I know work like, you know, five, six days a week for two months and then they won't work for a whole month. It, it's really up and down. It's really um, inconsistent. A lot of girls are really, really lucky. I mean, I know I've been really, really lucky in my career so far. Um, and, you know, you can't ever compare yourself to any other girls because you don't know what's going on with them. You don't know how much money they're making. You don't know what other things they've got going on on the side. So in this day and age, just just keep kind of your own business, your own business. Yes, models get paid differently for different jobs. Um, so don't kind of go asking models on, on set how much they're getting paid because it's really none of your business and it might put you in a really awkward position. I've explained the options holds confirmations uh, before in one of my other videos, but just in case you haven't watched them. 
options and holds are things that clients put on your a chart at your agency to say that they're considering using you for a shoot or a show. Um, it might be that they've put options on 10 girls because they're not sure who they like. It might be that they put options on one or two girls. It might be that they um, that they put option on one girl but they'll put it on a number of different days even though they only want to book her for a day because um, you know they don't know when the photographer is going to be available or if it's going to be raining or if the studio is going to be available sometimes the product doesn't arrive and sometimes the product sat in a shipping container somewhere so you know it's not always um, just because of anything it's just things happen and things change um, options and holds don't necessarily lead to confirmations but the fact that you know if you get options and holds it means that you have client interest and that you know people do want to use you it's just a matter of time to um, when you actually get that confirmation and confirmations can be cancelled um, so I'm not sure if there still is a rule about the whole you know if a client cancels within a certain amount of time they have to um, pay a cancellation fee I suppose it all depends on um, how in demand the girl is or um, what else the girl has going on that day that she's been stopped from doing. Um, try never to, to compare yourself to anyone else and don't take it personally. Like whatever happens, it's, you know, it can be really, really hard and I've seen some girls just absolutely, you know, shattered by it. But it's, um, you know, as long as you kind of keep um, you in check, then you should all be fine. So as a model, you really, really need to look after yourself. Um, you know, you need to be, you know, staying in the best possible shape that you can be in. That doesn't mean starving yourself by any stretch of the imagination because, you know, you can have long days, you can have days that require a lot of strength holding in one position for ages and ages. Um, so I, I feel like going to the gym and, you know, eating healthy is really important as a model. You know, if you you know, they say that your body is 80% about what you eat and 20% exercise. So if you exercise, you know, six days a week, you're always going to be ahead of someone that doesn't, even if they're eating less than you. Um, but just try and eat as much fruit and vegetables as you possibly can. Again, 80, 20, um, 80% 80 with the um, healthiness, 20% with the bit of a treat and stuff, you know, no one kind of wants to restrict themselves um, so you kind of just want to be as healthy and as strong as you possibly can um, you don't want to be too muscular unless you want to do sports modeling and then that's all about having you know six-pack toned legs really tight perky ass um, so that's one type of modeling I suppose you might want to get into but it's just so important to keep healthy, drink lots and lots of water because I promise you the more water you drink and the more fruit and vegetables you eat, the more your skin will just glow and then you will feel really good in yourself. Um, the better you kind of feel in yourself, the more it portrays out to um, clients and stuff. And even if you fake being happy, it never ever works. You have to really just be happy in yourself and a client will see that and then go oh I really love this girl like you know oh she may not be a hundred percent right but oh she was so sweet and she was so smiley and she was just you know so that can happen you know so just keep like really look after yourself and try not to follow any fad diets just try to be healthy if you don't really know what healthy is um, I might do another video some other time otherwise there's you know so much information out there these days I don't think there's any excuse for being um, unhealthy at all so your online presence these days is really really important so your social media yeah that's really important especially for younger models um, but also what you say and do on social media so you do not want to slag off a photographer or a makeup artist or a stylist on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram because you never know who's going to be able to screenshot that and send it to someone. Um, I mean in real everyday life I think it's bad enough but as a model you've constantly got people booking you know wanting to book you or thinking about booking you or can considering booking you or another girl and if something like bad like that happens you don't want that to be the reason that someone else has been booked over you and that might as well just happen if you you know go write slander comments on someone's page and you never know someone might not see it but someone might see it and you just just be really really careful about what you write on social media and so going back to the pay thing sometimes it can take three to six months to get paid so unlike a normal job where you get paid every week or fortnight or month or whatever um yeah as a model you 
don't get paid that often. Um, in Australia, I, I started out modelling in Australia, it was amazing, I got paid the Friday every week after I did the job. So literally, you're getting paid every week that you work. Yeah, no, and then I left and it doesn't work like that. <laughs> so um, now the my agency invoices a client within say 10 days and then the client has like 30 or 60 days to pay and then the client then might lose the invoice and then they'll get a reminder and then all of a sudden they're like oh no and then they pay and then it goes to the agency and then finally it comes to you. So even if you're like earning really really good money now you might not see it for you know three to four months down the line if not longer um, and you've also got to remember to put some money away for tax if you're um, self-employed or a limited company or anything you need to put your money away so that you'll be able to pay your tax um, every quarter every um, bi-yearly every yearly whatever it works out in your country or um, for your type of tax code you need to make sure that you put enough money away for tax because someone's not going to bail you out. So I think I've covered most of the questions I get asked about what's it like being a model. Um, if I haven't, just ask in the comments box below um, and I'll maybe try and do some other videos um, based on your suggestions. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching, subscribe and a big thumbs up please! Okay, thank you!